Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today we are going to be talking about the second and third players to be signed from the USFL to the NFL, as one team signed two of them in the same position, basically within a 24 hours time span. Dijon Neal of the New Jersey Generals and Channing Stribling of the Philadelphia Stars have both recently signed with the Washington Commanders. Now, without further ado, let's just talk about both those players before we talk about their time and how it's going to be with the Commanders. So, Dijon Neal pretty much is someone who most people, you know, casual fans probably don't know about. He played pretty much seven games during the season for the Generals. He dealt with injuries in the beginning and end of the year. He overall just had a few tackles. He was a cornerback. That was pretty much all I could say about him. He's another one of those guys who I'm kind of surprised did get signed, but he did. And then we have Channing Shribling. Yeah, Channing Shribling was, um, I think people know who he is. Um, he was an all-U.S. fall cornerback. He had seven interceptions to the league. His 14 tackles and 16 total were pretty solid. As Oh, by the way, uh, Dijon Neal did have like 16 tackles ac- across his thing. It's just that, you know, because of how the Fox Sports is a thing, it's hard to find that. But he did have 16 tackles to show the graphic thingy. But Jane Shribling also had a sack, a couple TFLs, and those seven interceptions were really insane, along with his 11 pass defenses. Overall, he was a really solid cornerback. Everyone knows that he was outstanding, especially considering the fact that he did deal with some injuries and stuff. I mean, he did that in seven games. In seven games, he had seven interceptions. That's on pace for literally 10 across the season, and his team did get to the championship game, though they did lose. Now, here's the depth chart. As you can see, they're nowhere to be found. The Washington Commanders have a legit, I guess, depth at cornerback to where, unlike Christian Sam, who just kind of got plucked in just pretty much because there was space, they're going to have to earn their spot spot a bit more. Now, I know they did cut a couple cornerbacks to sign them, but overall, getting onto this depth chart is going to be pretty difficult. So, it's simply when you start with the fourth stringers and just, you know, the lower end guys, Josh Drayden is an undrafted free agent rookie, so there's a very solid chance that he'll be kicked off for one of them. Then Christian Holmes is a seventh round pick, and I, at that one, there's a good chance that he could be overtaken too. And then Troy App, he's someone who I've heard before. He hasn't, you know, been a star. I'm not saying he's like, you know, this all world beater, but he has been a legit cornerback. He's played in a lot of games. It's just not necessarily was he a starter or something, but he's someone who would be a bit harder to take off. And then Corn Elder, as a Panther fan, I watched him his second year where he was there. He was okay. Like, I'm not the best at, you know, evaluating a cornerback, but I mean, I remember he was, you know, he was there. He was, uh, he was there. And then last year, he wasn't as good as he was with the Panthers that second year. So him and Apt, I could see them getting taken over. But then you get to the other four guys, and it's a bit less. As you got Benjamin St. Just, he was a third round pick literally like last year. And he did have a good amount of tackles and pass defenses. So I feel like there's a very good shot that he's going to stay at that backup cornerback role. I just, I don't know if they're really going to take him off. And then Danny Johnson has been with the team for like five years now. And he's consistently, it seems like being one of those guys that can come in and come out and play and stuff like that. So I think there's a very solid chance that he'll stay there. And then when you get to the top two, I mean, William Jackson, mainly with Cincinnati for a long time, he came to Washington. He's been a solid cornerback, like legit solid. And then Kendall Fuller is probably one of the most underrated cornerbacks in the league just because he's on this team. He's been a very, very, very solid cornerback in his career, especially the last couple of years. So I feel like those top four, so the you know two starters and the two backups, for the cornerbacks, I think are going to be too much for them to overcome. But I think that Stribling and Neal could definitely become that fourth and third string guys. I feel like they can definitely overtake some of those guys. I do feel like Stribling has a better shot at making it than Dijon Neal. It's close, but I feel like Stribling just... When you're... That all US fell and the way he played is something that, you know, is really beneficial because it shows that he can legit be a, you know, solid, like... I guess he can get interceptions and... As long as you don't, you know, get burned over the top a ton like Trayvon Diggs, no one can really hate you for that. So I feel like he's a better shot at making it, but at the same time, Neil did get signed first. Overall, they both didn't get signed, and they both are on the team. They're not on the active, you know, they're not on the depth chart for, you know, the starters and, like, the 50-man roster, but they are signed to the team. Those two, I feel like, have less of a shot at becoming a star, like, starter than Sam does, but... Like you, but like last time, time will only tell.
This has been Zom Fox. Enjoy this content when I be notified as soon as I upload any videos. Especially since as long as the players keep getting signed every like two, four days, I legit can keep making videos on each one of these players and talk about the situation, which I am all for. So have a nice night. As always, see you guys next time. Have a great night. Subscribe and hit the bell. See ya.